Hi folks, and welcome to another episode of Open Analysis Live. So today I have something a little bit different. It's not a, a reverse engineering tutorial. It's more of a sort of overview of how to go from Yara hits. So you run a Yara signature and it's come up with a few matches on a binary and you wanna map that to the binary that you have loaded in IDA. So what we're gonna talk about is how do you map from the Yara signature hits to what you're seeing in IDA itself and how to put those two things together. Now you might be asking like why is this important well a lot of the time at least for me personally when I'm reverse engineering a new sample a lot of the time my interest for the sample comes from the fact that the Yara rule has actually matched on the sample so if that happens I kind of know that the sample is interesting because a Yara rule has matched on it and what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a closer look at the sections in the file that the Yara rule has actually matched on because those might be interesting pivots to learn more about the sample a lot of the time Yara rules that are good robust Yara rules are built around unique attributes of malware. So whether it be crypto algorithms that they use or C2 communication templates that they use or some unique code segments that they're using, maybe they're using some embedded assembly or something like that that's very unique. A lot of times when you have a good YAR rule, those are the components that make it up. And so when you go and load the binary in IDA, by being able to identify these sections, it's gonna make your reverse engineering task a lot faster because you already know what these are because the YAR rule has told you. So if you want to map from the YAR rule here, into the binary in IDA. There's basically two ways to do it. There's the old school way, which I'll show you guys first, and it's pretty straightforward, but it's manual. And then there's the new school way, which is a plugin that Sean and I just released today on our GitHub, and I'll link to that below, and I'll just walk you guys through how to use the plugin. So let's just jump into our command line here and uh, take a look at what we have. So from the last video that I did, where we unpacked that sample with a bunch of anti-debug and anti-analysis tricks, at the end of it, I told you guys that it was Loki bot. So what we have here, this dump.exe, this is the actual output from that uh, unpacked sample. And I'll put a link to it in the description below the video. Also, I should mention that since the last video that we recorded, Hybrid Analysis has introduced a new sort of extra vetting feature Feature if you want to download samples from it. So in my opinion, it's no longer a good place for us to upload samples because you guys might not be able to download them right away. You have to submit some information to them in order to download samples. So instead, we're going to be using Malshare, which is a fantastic project. You guys can just sign up and, and get an account there for free. And we'll be posting all of our samples now on Malshare. So it should be easier for you guys to get if you don't have that extra vetting with hybrid analysis. Okay, so here we go. We have a dump.exe and we have our Loki bot rule. Let's take a look at that uh, Loki bot rule here for a second. So what we have there, your rules, we have a few ASCII strings here starting there's, there's ASCII strings here. We have one wide string, which is the data string. And then we have a bunch of hex bytes here. So some binary. So you can see here in the binary, there's also a few wild cards uh, with these question marks. Those, those mean that there's wild cards. So we have a nice array of different types, different strings to look for. So we have ASCII, wide, and some binary. And I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like on the command line if we just run the yar rule on the dump file and show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so let's run Yara, and I'm gonna use the dash s command because that prints all of the string matches in the binary. So instead of just saying that the Yara rule match, it'll actually print each one of those strings that match so we can see what they look like. So Yara string match, Logibot on uh, dump.exe. So here we can see in the file here at each one of these offsets in the file, uh, these strings match. Now here it looks kind of like a garbled word, but but if you look closely, you can see that's D null byte A null byte T null byte A null byte which is data as a wide string. So wide string just means that there's two bytes per character. So it's almost like an ASCII string has been stretched and in between each byte, you've put a null byte. So data has been stretched and in between each character, there's a null byte. That's why it sort of looks like this with these null bytes. And then of course here, we actually have data that's been matched by that binary string in, uh, in the YAR rule. So these are our matches. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys the old school method for showing these matches or finding these matches in the file that you've opened in IDA. So let's pop over to IDA, we'll open it up and I'll show you this trick. Okay, so we have our IDA instance open here and we've loaded dump.exe. And so now let's try and find the location of those Yara matches in here using the old school method. And the old school method is really just to search for those strings and see where they're located at. So probably the first thing we wanna do is just uh, show the strings table here. So we'll just click strings. Um, so then this shows us all the ASCII and wide strings. And by default, when you see this string table, IDA will actually just show you either ASCII 
opacity or wide. But what you can do is you can do a right click, you can go to setup, and then you can choose Unicode and C strings. This will show you wide and ASCII strings at the same time in the same file. That's just a quick trick there. And the way you can tell the different types is if you sort of look down here, C strings are ASCII strings and Unicode strings are wide strings. So what we can do now is we can go back to our YAR rule here with the matches and we can start looking for these strings and see if they uh, exist in our uh, strings table. Let's say this password value. So we'll just control C, we'll grab that. We'll come over here and in our finder window, control V, and here we go, here's the password value. So if we wanna find where that's located in the binary, we can just double click on the address and here it is in the binary. And then of course, we can always just right click on that and do a jump to cross references. And then we can see this the reference in the binary code right here. So this is where it's actually referenced in your assembly. So that's kind of a quick way to jump from strings to uh, where they're located in the binary. What about all that data code that we showed? What about this data string here? Well, this one's a little bit different because you can't see that in the strings table. Instead, what you'd want to do is you'd want to take a copy of that. So we'll just copy these bytes here. And then we pop back over to Ida here and we go to this binary search, this little binoculars with uh, ones and zeros. And this binary search works exactly as you would expect it to. You just paste in the hex bytes, make sure it's in hex mode, find all occurrences, and yeah, there we go. So it searches for it and it finds it in the binary. And again, we can just click on the address here to show us where it is. Now you might be wondering, well, what am I actually looking at? If we go back here at this binary here, it says that this binary has been found at this offset. But if we go in here and we look at that offset, it's actually a bunch of assembly code. It's not a string or anything like that. Well, what you're actually looking at is you're actually looking at the binary for the op codes of the assembly. So what we can do is we can go into options general and number of opcode bytes let's just change that to eight so we can actually see what the bytes are themselves now I showed this to you in a different video uh, in the how to uh, patch uh, using Ida and a hex editor in that video I showed you this trick of showing the opcodes so if you want kind of a refresher on that I'll link to that video below as well uh, where I kind of go more into detail about what the opcodes are and, and how you can display them and what they mean but essentially what we did with that binary search was see this 69c01 if we go back and look at that string, 69C01010, so right down here, that's actually the opcodes that we're seeing here. And those opcodes actually are representing a multiplication with that number 101010. So what we're doing is we're actually searching for the opcodes, the actual assembly opcodes. Um, so sometimes when you're searching for these strings, you'll want to turn on the opcodes, the opcode view, just so you can see what you're actually matching on. So really what that YAR rule was searching for was it was actually searching for this block of assembly code here, which must somehow be unique to LokiBot. Now I'm not an expert on Loki, so I don't really know what makes this so unique. I can see that's kind of a unique multiplication, but I'm not quite sure why it would be unique to Loki. But it is, and so that YAR rule was able to actually identify this little code segment here. So that, in a nutshell, is the old school method to, to doing this. So that's that's how you would do this you had, if you had no plugin, uh, the quick and dirty way. And of course, you can use these string searches and this uh, binary search here with any binary text and any text that you might want to find in the disassembled IDA code. So it doesn't have to come from a YAR rule. It's just that most times when you're looking for these matches, they're probably attributes in a YAR rule. Now I'm going to show you guys our new plugin, which makes this way, way easier. <laughs> so what we do is let's just exit out of this. And so let's go over to our exports here, just so that we go back to the start, the start part of the code. You know, we'll, we'll just reset the view here. And here we're going to keep these opcode displays on because I think it's useful and it'll probably be useful when we do this, uh, when we run this plugin. So we've actually already installed this plugin in our IDA instance. Again, I'm linking to the plugin below, uh, which is on our GitHub with instructions on how to install it. The plugin is super simple, no extra dependencies except for Yara. That's it. That's all you have to be have to have installed. So it should never break. I mean, fingers crossed, famous last words, but across all IDA instances, it should actually work. So it's already installed here. It's called Find Yara. So if we go to Edit, Plugins, and we run Find Yara, it's going to load up and it loads up a picker window where we get to pick the Yara rule that we want to run. So it says, choose your Yara file here. Uh, we have that 
Logi bot Yara. Let's uh, select it. We'll open it up. It runs the script. And then it uh, once it's finished running, it displays in this little window here, the address where it found the match, the name of the Yara rule that matched here. So Loki bot is the match, the actual string that matched and what type of string it is here. So this kind of makes it a little bit easier to see. Like here we can see there's that binary string. Here's data and it's represented here as data instead of that D null byte, A null byte, et cetera, et cetera. Here we actually show you the data string and we just tell you that it's a wide string. And then of course the ASCII strings are displayed here. So now instead of having to do all that search, you just load the R rule and then you can just double click on this and it brings you right to where the string is used in the code. And of course for the binary data here, we can just double click on that. And that takes us back here to where we were just looking at a second ago with that multiplication with 101010. So that's it folks. That's all for this tutorial. Really quick description, but this is something that I use daily. Uh, like I said, this is pretty much the way that I start out most of my analysis. Once I've unpacked something, I run your rules on it. Any matches, I look for those in the code and that's where I start my reverse engineering. So super useful. Hopefully you guys like the plugin. Uh, we're always looking for feedback. If, so if there's things that you'd like to see us uh, improve on, et cetera, et cetera, uh, make sure you comment below. We're looking for those or send us a DM or a message on Twitter and we'll respond to that. As always, uh, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications below. New tutorials every week. We'll try one video every week so far, so good. And also please, please uh, spread the word. If you like what you're seeing here, tell your friends, tell your coworkers. So I guess that's it for now. And uh, as always, keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware and stay curious.